Do you hear that? That's the Infinity QX50's way of saying hello. As it unlocks the door for you and invites you inside. Now you're comfortably sitting down and cooling down in your climate-controlled, quilted seat. Surrounded by empowering technology, you can set your drive mode and the mood. When I popped off, then your girl gave me just a little bit of baby so cold. Coming up, these 318 new cameras that Houston is going to lease, these are not the only license plate cameras around in Houston. In fact, they will join a network of around 800 or so that are already in use. For Vault Studios, I'm Reed Redmond. You're listening to The Daily Crime. If you've driven anywhere in the Houston area recently, there's a good chance you were captured on camera. HPD officials say that departments in Katy, Sugarland, Pearland, and many other cities already share their camera data with HPD. So do homeowners associations and businesses like the Galleria. And police officials say those cameras recently helped catch a murder suspect and return a possibly trafficked girl to her family. And that network of cameras is about to expand even further. After the Houston City Council approved spending millions of dollars to lease new automatic license plate readers. Not only helping protect the community, but also helping solve crimes throughout Houston. They can be appropriate and even beneficial tools to solve serious crimes. But if used without those safeguards, the tools can raise serious privacy and transparency concerns. For all those criminals that are out there, know that the eyes will be on you. It's important to prioritize your mental health and wellness every day, because when you work on yourself, you'll start to see and feel positive changes in all areas of your life. The long-term effects of therapy can give you the tools to deal with challenges as they arise, strengthen your relationships, and give you a more optimistic outlook on life. There's no better time to invest in yourself than right now. And that's where Talkspace comes in. Talkspace can help with any specific challenges you might be facing, but also you don't need to wait until something goes wrong in your life to work with a therapist. You can just do it now. Getting started is the most important part. And you've heard me say it before, Talkspace is the number one online therapy platform with thousands of licensed therapists trained in over 40 specialties, including anxiety, depression, relationships, and more. Your therapist can help you set and achieve your goals. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off your first month with Talkspace. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com. Make sure to use the code DAILYCRIME, no spaces, to get $100 off your first month and show your support for the show. That's DAILYCRIME and Talkspace.com. Adam Bennett is a reporter with KHOU in Houston, Texas. Adam, thanks for joining me. Yeah, Reed, thanks for having me. So you recently reported that 300 new automatic license plate reader cameras are coming to Houston Let's start with the basics. The name sort of says it all, but what exactly are automatic license plate reader cameras? So they are cameras that take a still image of a vehicle that's going by from the rear, and it captures an image of the license plate. And it reads the data on that license plate and compares it to a national database of stolen or otherwise wanted or flagged vehicles that may have been involved in the crime. If it gets a hit on that particular vehicle, it will then send an alert to the police department that has access to that database, letting them know, hey, this vehicle passed by this camera at this location at this time. And then that allows law enforcement to redirect their resources to pursue that if they want to. So, Adam, I want to clarify something. I don't live in Houston, but coincidentally, just this week, I got a letter for the first time ever saying that I was captured on a traffic camera going a few miles per hour over the speed limit. Thankfully, it was just a warning, not an actual ticket. But to get to my question here, how are these automatic license plate readers different from other kinds of cameras, traffic cameras or red light cameras that you see in in cities around the country? So Houston actually did have red light cameras a little over a decade ago before voters banned them. So that was actually one of the questions that came up during city council's discussion. One of the council members who was the big proponent behind the red light camera ban, he said, does that ban cover these cameras? And the city attorney said, no, I don't believe it does because those red light cameras are for a specific traffic enforcement reason that's very clearly detailed out in the city charter, whereas these cameras 
go more toward the crime side of things and are used to tap into a, ba- a database rather to solve crimes. We've been hearing about license plate readers rolling out, not just where you're at in Houston, but all over the country. But specifically in Houston, where are these cameras set to go up? Are they going to be concentrated in particular areas or neighborhoods? And if that is the case, how is that decision being made? So they're actually very widespread across a huge chunk of the city, both in individual neighborhoods, but also on city properties as well. A lot of the requests came from the public works department. Uh, There's another city department that handles parking enforcement. They wanted some of those cameras on their facilities. But when you look at the breakdown of council district by council district, they're pretty evenly spread out in the city. I would say more of them are on the west side, which in Houston is the wealthier, generally safer side of town, actually. Uh, But it's important to note that these 318 new cameras that Houston is going to lease from Flock Safety, these are not the only license plate cameras around in Houston. In fact, they will join a network of around 800 or so that are already in use. And those are cameras that are in use, a few of them by Houston police actually already. They have a number of mobile license plate readers in their patrol vehicles. There are also a number of neighborhood associations, maybe you know, homeowners associations, management districts, apartment complexes that have them in use that share that data with Houston police. And then there are the private businesses. Two of the most popular shopping malls in Houston already have them set up at entrances and exits, in part as a response to crime that has already taken place on their property, according to Houston police officials. You mentioned that these new cameras, these 318 cameras, are going to be leased from a private company How much is that going to cost the city? The contract is worth about $6.4 million to lease the cameras over the course of five years. And it's from a company called Flock Safety. That to some might sound like a steep price tag. How does the city justify that cost? What do they say these cameras are actually going to do? Well, they used a couple of real life examples that they say show that the cameras have already been working. So As I mentioned, there's already a network of about 800 cameras that are already in use, a few by Houston police, but mainly by private entities that share that data with HPD, as well as other law enforcement agencies that share that data with HPD. Several departments in the suburbs around Houston already use these cameras. And one of the officials, an assistant chief with Houston police, who's been the one presenting to neighborhood groups and council committees and then the full council, he said that these cameras just recently helped them catch a murder suspect. And he said that in another case, they were able to uh, locate a young girl who they believe was trafficked and return her to her family. And that's on top of, they say, a number of stolen vehicles that have already been recovered through this program. It lets us know that, hey, yes, that vehicle was seen here, here, and here on these times. And it gives us uh, leads to go about trying to uh, get that violent individual off the streets before they victimize someone else. Police say they just don't have enough officers to cover the entire footprint of Houston. Just for listeners who've never been there, it is more than 600 square miles just in the city proper. That's not even counting the surrounding area. So for context, Houston and Chicago have roughly similar populations. Chicago is the third largest city in the country. Houston is the fourth largest by population. Houston's landmass is almost three times the size of Chicago. And city officials say they have about half of the number of police officers that Chicago does. So basically, they say they can't be everywhere at once. And in fact, the assistant chief said even if they had the budget that they wanted to, to hire as many officers as they wanted, it wouldn't be able to cover all of the area that they needed to. So they call these cameras a game changer and they've used the term force multiplier before. It just allows them to have more eyes, so to speak, in more places that officers normally wouldn't be able to cover. Now, a lot of crimes involve vehicles that are using fake plates or that don't have plates on them at all. Do these cameras serve any purpose in that scenario? Yes, and that actually came up because that's been a huge issue here in Houston and across a lot of Texas, as I'm sure it has been across much of the country, where a number of people are getting these fake paper plates and police are finding that they're involved in a lot of crimes. So what they say they can do is if they have a paper plate description from, uh, let's say, a murder, right? 
drive-by shooting. They can plug in some or all of that plate number as well as vehicle descriptors. So they gave the example of a red pickup truck with bumper stickers and a roof rack. They can program that into the software. And so if the cameras do pick up a vehicle with those characteristics, it'll still ping the police and alert them where and when that vehicle was captured on camera. Officially one hour until your favorite show premieres. Time to get some snacks delivered through Instacart. Okay, let's get some popcorn, seltzer, chocolate-covered almonds, and... <gasps> Wait, did they release the whole season? Better cart some ice cream for the two-part finale. When your day should be ending but a new season is starting, the world is your cart. Visit instacart.com or download the app and get free delivery on your first order. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. There is no true joy in conforming. But not everyone has what it takes to be different. Introducing a crossover coupe for those who have what it takes to break free. The all-new Infiniti QX55 with a dramatic style that defies expectations and turns heads. The Infiniti QX55. Lead the way. Let the world catch up. So what exactly happens after there's a hit on one of these cameras, after they identify a vehicle that's potentially involved in a crime? So it's important to note that just the hit alone cannot be used as reasonable suspicion to stop a vehicle. And it can also not be used as probable cause for an arrest. Officers still have to verify the NCIC hits prior to stopping a vehicle. There has to be also a justified reason for any flagging of a suspect vehicle. Police have to have something else. So let's say that they get a hit on a vehicle. Hey, this pickup truck was reported stolen. Well, they have to, number one, verify that the plate on the truck matches the plate from the photo. And then they actually have to call it into dispatch and verify that the vehicle was stolen or somehow otherwise confirm it. That one photo, that one hit from the software is not enough alone to take action. So you talked through why Houston police and the city of Houston think these cameras will be helpful in investigating or potentially preventing violent crimes. What objections to this rollout have you heard while reporting on this? One of the groups that has raised some concerns about these cameras is the ACLU of Texas. I did reach out to them for this particular story on this vote that Houston City Council was doing. I did not hear back from them, but we did talk to them a few months earlier about the same type of cameras in another city surrounding Houston. Nick Hudson with the ACLU of Texas says there's a fine line. We don't want the government to be tracking, uh, to be able to have information that allows them to piece together where people go to church, who they're seeing, uh, and, and what neighborhoods they're hanging out in. And one of their spokespeople had said, that these cameras can be appropriate, and he said even beneficial tools to solve serious crimes. But they said that without these safeguards, the tools can raise serious privacy and transparency concerns. A couple of the council members also raised concerns. I'll note one of them was the chair of the Public Safety Committee. During one of the early hearings on this, she had a number of questions about how exactly this data would be used, who would have access to the system, uh, what checks and balances would be in place. And so that was actually a lot of the discussion, both in the committee meetings and then eventually when council voted on this. And the HPD officials were very clear. They said this several times that any action that they take with this system has to have a legitimate law enforcement purpose. And it can't just be a you know random fishing expedition, just, oh, let's see you know what this plate turns up. They really have to be looking for some specific reason. They mentioned that every action taken with this system is logged internally so that at some point in the future, if there's ever a question about any particular action that police took or an entity just wants to have an audit just for transparency's sake, there will be a paper trail of all of the actions that were taken in this system. There was another question about what's going to happen with all of the data here that this company is collecting. And the response the police gave is that the data will be stored for 30 days. It's police that have access to it, and that's it. 
And then after 30 days, the data will be removed from the system. Before I let you go, what does the timeline look like for this rollout? When will these 300 new cameras go up? So that is the million dollar question. (laughs) We have not been able to get a clear timeline at this point about when they'll be installed. Um, But I know that a lot of the council members are eager to see them in their district. And they say that their constituents are too. They say that when they've presented this in neighborhood groups, civic clubs, uh, people have been asking, when are we gonna get this? And can I get one in my neighborhood? So it seems to be an urgency to get these installed, especially when Houston, like so many cities around the country, has seen an increase in crime over the last couple of years. We'll have to keep an eye on your continued reporting at khou.com. Adam Bennett with KHOU, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. And thank you for listening to this episode of The Daily Crime. We're right here with a new one every day of the week, Monday through Friday. So make sure you're subscribed to or following the show wherever it is you're listening right now. If you're looking for something else to listen to, I encourage you to check out Vault Studio's newest podcast, Intent, the Tex McIver case. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, for Vault Studios, I'm Reed Redmond. 